Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and may I wish you a happy new year. Thank you so much for following me into 2012, and I'm hoping this year I'm going to have even more videos than last year, because nine tutorial videos is just not enough to do in one year. So my new year's resolution is to do at least ten. I'm just kidding. Hopefully there's a lot more than ten. Anyways, if you haven't been following me so far, we are working on using the N-Audio class library available at naudio.coplex.com to do all sorts of neat things in C-Sharp, uh, mostly audio related. And all of my previous tutorials can be downloaded from my website at www.giawa.com slash tutorials. All the tutorials, all the source code, all the videos, they're all available on there for your viewing pleasure. So this is tutorial number 10. And I've gotten a few requests for this tutorial, and this is to have some sort of method for displaying the waveform of an audio file in some sort of viewer control or user control. So we're going to try and tackle that today. There's a few ways that we can address this issue. The first method is to use some controls that are built into an audio. And that's the first thing we'll do to explore. The second is to use the data visualization charting class libraries that are available in the .NET Framework 4.0 where you can also download them for .NET 3.5, I believe, from the Microsoft website. And then the third approach, which will probably have to be a separate tutorial, but the third approach would be to write your own custom control to view them because really there isn't a super elegant solution. So writing your own control is probably what you'll end up doing in the end, but we'll, we'll work our way towards there. So I'm going to go and create a new project, and this is going to be tutorial 10, which is a Windows Forms application. We'll let that do its thing. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an audio as a reference to my project. So if I browse here, I'll be able to grab the new nAudio.dll. All right then. So as I mentioned, the first way I'm going to attempt to display a waveform is by using the nAudio controls that are built into the class library. So to get access to those controls in my toolbox, they're all here on the right, but to do that, you can go in here and you can actually select choose items. Once you select choose items, you can go and browse to your nAudio DLL and add them to your toolbox. So if you're curious how you're able to add things to your toolbox, that's the way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a menu strip so I can actually tell it how to open or when to open a wave file. And the next thing I'm going to do is add the wave viewer to my form. And when I add this wave viewer, I'm also going to dock him so that he takes up the entire screen. Expand this guy a bit. Perhaps give him a name. Tutorial 10. Oh, that was the wrong field. What you see here, it's up here. Text. Tutorial 10. All right. And I'm going to add a file menu here. And the only thing I'm going to put in my file menu is open wave. All right, so that's all we have to do for constructing our form. I'll go in here, double click on open wave, and we'll start writing some code. So using the wave viewer is pretty easy. What we'll start with is an open file dialog. And if the dialog is not opened okay, then we'll just return from this function. And I'll actually add a filter in here as well, so that only wave files can be opened. Okay, and now that we have a path to our wave file, it's pretty easy to go and plot it in the wave stream, or sorry, wave viewer. So we get our wave viewer and we'll tell it where the wave stream is. We'll create a new an audio dot wave dot wave file reader using the path that we supplied. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to compile and run this code just on my other monitor there, so drag it over, open the wave, and I'll select an old wave file I made a couple of months ago from an old tutorial. Double click that, and as you can see, we've got the wave data displayed in our form. But you can see that it kind of keeps going past the edge of our window. So we need to address that issue. And the way to fix that is to change the number of samples per pixel. So N audio is going in for every pixel in the horizontal direction, it decides how many samples place in that one pixel. So we can address that by telling the wave viewer, wave viewer 
that we want, say, 400 samples per pixel. So now there's going to be 400 audio samples that are looked at per pixel drawn. Okay, so I'm going to open the WAV file, and there we go. That looks quite a bit better. Yeah, it ends right there. So that's the entire WAV file there drawn using the WAV viewer. So you can use the samples per pixel to sort of zoom in and out. And then the other thing you can do is actually set the position in the stream. So I believe it's called, uh, no, that can't be right. It's not location. Well, let's go and take a look. Um, I'm going to go in here and ask for the definition of wave viewer. And you can see that it's start position. That's what I was looking for. So we'll close all that. And wave viewer start position. And I'm going to put it at, say, the, I don't know, the 10,000th sample, or let's go 40,000th sample. Okay, we'll just open this. There you go. So, yeah, there's quite a bit less data on there. You can see that it, it skipped out about 40,000 samples, well, exactly 40,000 samples into my WAV file as displayed it. So by using the combination of start position and samples per pixel, you can go and you can change which area you're viewing. So you should have full control over that, and that's one way to do it. And this way is actually pretty quick and pretty good. It's just that there's not a lot of cus customization that you can do. I uh, There might be a way to change these colors. I haven't, I haven't really found it yet. Could be that it uses one of the. Let's just give it a shot. Four color equals color not blue. This is just a total shot in the dark. I don't know if this is going to do anything. No. Okay. So I'm going to assume that there's no real easy way to adjust the color. So that's why we're going to move into more advanced one. This is just yeah, just changes the background color. So. No luck there, sorry I tried. So that's one way to do it. The second method I'm going to do is, uh, or second method I'm going to use is the charting libraries built into .NET 4. So I'm going to go and remove this wave viewer and I'll go and drop a chart onto the screen and I'm going to dock it as well. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to remove the data that's already available in here. So to do that, I'm going to click it and then remove the legends by going to this collection here. Legends remove, okay. And then I'm going to go into series, which are actually the data series. Click that collection and remove the one that's available there. And now I'm going to go and start to add my code. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the chart where I'm going to draw my WAV file. So we can go to my chart and tell it we want to add a new series and I'm going to give it a name and that name is going to be wave and now I can address that wave series by name and I'm going to set its chart type to a fast line and you need to use fast line because line is way too slow even fast line is, is a little bit too slow as we're going to see here and I'm going to change one more parameter here it's going to be the chart area and I'm going to use the default chart area, which is chart area one. And this just comes standard with the chart. You can see that if I click my chart and click chart areas, there's a chart area one built in there. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Now we have to actually go and add data to our chart, which means that we have to open up the WAV file, read it into memory, and find some way of converting it to the right format to display in this chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Wave Channel 32 class, which is a class we've used before. And the nice thing about this class is that it automatically performs all the format conversions we need to get a 32-bit floating point number of the Wave file. So we'll start with that, Wave Channel 32. And for the Wave Stream, I'm going to provide the Wave File Reader. There it is, and pass my path. All right, so this Wave Channel 32 will take care of all of the decoding for us and uh, format conversion. And now I just have to go and read from this. But I have to read into a byte array, which is sort of counterintuitive. I need some way of converting from a byte array over to a floating point number. So the way to do that is to remember that there are four bytes in every floating point number, and we can use the bit converter to translate between the two. 
So I'm going to go and choose to read 16 kilobytes at a time from a WAV file. And I just chose that number sort of arbitrarily, but uh, bear with me here. And the other thing I'm going to do is, uh, oh, that's it actually, that's the only variable I need. So I'm going to go and uh, make sure that my wave position is less than the length of the file. And I knew I was forgetting one variable, I need to get the number of bytes that I actually read. So I'm going to have an int called read. So while the wave position is less than wavelength, I'll perform a read. So read will be equal to wave.read. And I'm going to read into my destination buffer, which I call buffer. Its offset is zero, uh, zero bytes into my buffer. And then I'm going to read 16 kilobytes into my buffer. And now I have to go and convert those bytes into floating point numbers. So I have to loop across all the floating point numbers in there. So you remember that there's four bytes for every floating point number. And that means I will have 4,000, 4,096 to be precise, I guess, uh, floating point numbers for every 16,384 bytes that I read in. That's just 16384 divided by four. So I'm gonna say i is equal to zero, i is less than however many I read divided by four because read is gonna be the number of bytes I read. And now I'll use the bit converter class to convert my bytes to a floating point number and put that into my chart. So I'll do that by saying chart one, that's series wave, points.add. So I'll be adding a new point and the new point is going to be a floating point number that I retrieve from the bit converter class. I'll use the method to single, which converts to a 32 bit floating point number. And I'm going to use the buffer as my byte array and the start index of my float is going to be i times four. All right, that's all there is to it. So this is going to be using the new data visualization classes. We'll fire it up and you can see it looks pretty empty to start. I'll go and open my WAV file, select my voice, and now it's going and reading the file. It's a little bit slower because it has to read every single value and plot it to the screen. But when it gets there, it looks pretty good. This is, uh, that yeah, looks pretty nice. That's the number of samples along the bottom. This is the amplitude on the left. Now the nice thing about the data visualization classes in this chart library is that it's very, very extensible. You can do all sorts of things like choosing the colors, uh, zooming in on the axes, everything like that. So it provides a lot more power than the one that's built into an audio. The unfortunate thing is that it is not optimized for sound. So drawing speeds are quite slow on it. You can see that my computer, although it's a little bit old, has a tough time with it. So what we probably will have to decide from this is that neither of these controls is probably going to give us the results we really wanted. We probably want to write a custom control that will allow us to very quickly uh, plot the data on the screen. It's gonna be optimized for audio files and that's what I'm going to try and start to do in tutorial 11. So I hope this was an interesting tutorial and at least got you started towards plotting your waveforms on the screen. So as I mentioned before, the tutorials are always available at www.giawa.com slash tutorials. All the source code, everything like that you need for the lesson is available right there. So thank you for watching and as always, have fun coding.